three seconds. Hello and good morning. My name is Brandon. I'm a freediving instructor, a breath training coach, and I am here on day three of the CMAS Freediving Pool World Championship here in Kuwait. Today, for those of you who don't already know, uh, we are doing statics. Static is a discipline what you're seeing now in our first heat, where a diver takes a full deep breath, lays face down in the water, and then holds their breath for as long as they can. It is pure free diving, breath holding. for a few minutes now. Uh, we have in zone B, Ali Al Salem, Kuwait. In lane C, we have Irini Ana Lagonica of Greece. In lane D, we have my Abder, Abader, excuse me, of Kuwait. In lane E, we have Toprak Toprak of Turkey. There we can see Aliyah now being supported by her coach. Okay, coming up, showing the okay sign. During this competition, in order to complete the dive, a diver needs to come up and give the okay sign to the judges. There is no other protocol required, no removal of facial equipment, uh, not even saying I'm okay. 
simply showing the OK sign on your fingers is enough. Today we will see that some athletes will have their own coaches with them. Uh, for example, there we see Boris uh, with Aliyah. Boris has been here for the last, oh, I think five months, he said, uh, working with the Kuwait team to uh, help work with them and prepare them for this home competition. And others uh, will not. I think we saw Mai there, who was just with the safeties. Okay, sorry about that. My notes have been more organized now, and I'm ready to get this party started. So, static is a discipline that uh, a lot of people, I think, don't like. Um, it's one of those disciplines where it doesn't seem like there's a lot going on, uh, especially from a spectator point of view. Last three minutes. But in the athlete's mind, in their body, there is a lot going on. So what I'm going to try and do during this competition uh, is give you a little bit of an insight into what is going on inside of a diver's head inside of a diver's body uh, so hopefully a little bit more of an awareness of uh, what is happening here As you can see, we have uh, six zones going today. So in Two previous minutes. days, we have had four divers going at the same time. Uh, today, because we've had so many static contestants come up, uh, we have moved to six to keep the party going and also try and give them enough time for those that do want to do the eight times 50 uh, happening a little bit later on today. One minute and 30 seconds. Today we will see, as you see, I believe in lane, I think that was lane uh, E, uh, Miriam Alueri. Uh, we'll see some divers who will One prepare minute. by breathing, uh, like we see here with a snorkel in their mouth, just face down in the water. Uh, we will see others. Ooh, excuse me. We will see others that are uh, breathing, just sitting up. Uh, if you saw before, there are uh, stands on the pool bottom 
that divers are able to kneel on or stand on. Three seconds. Others will be laying on their backs. As I say, every day, 20 seconds. Each diver is different. Each one has their own preferences and styles for preparing mentally and physically. Ten seconds. And as such, whatever is best for them is best for them. Five, four, three, two, one, top time. So here we will see a full breath in. Plus 10 seconds. Reminders that divers have up to 30 seconds to begin the dive after the top time. Plus 20 seconds. So we have Amel Alashek. Plus 25, 26, uh, 27, uh, Saudi Arabia in 29, 30. Lujan Almadi of Saudi Arabia in lane B. Miriam Alwedi. Saudi Arabia lane C, and Carol Carrasco of Chile in lane F. All competing in the senior division. Uh, the current CMAS world record is set by Veronica Didis uh, at 8 minutes and 53 seconds. So that is the time to beat for the women for a new world record. There we see Ricardo with Carol. Ricardo set a new Pan American record yesterday uh, in the four times 50. And also in the uh, dynamic bifins, I believe. There we can see the minutes in green and the seconds in red. Uh, unfortunately, because everyone starts at a slightly different time, we cannot really show Maybe we, we can show the uh, the top time timer, just so you guys have an idea of where we are in the uh, in the breath hold. Let's see if we can add something like that for you guys. go. Mel is up. can see here Miriam standing, still facing the water, still holding her breath. See the safety tapping her shoulder. Uh, that is a uh, thing that you've designed or you've come up with previously uh, with the judge and the safeties. Every time they tap your shoulder, you need to show a sign on your hand so you know that you are okay. And it's important to note that as soon as uh, the diver comes up and begins recovering, the coach is no longer able to interact with the uh, athlete at all. Uh, 
you can only interact after the card has been given. Okay, so that's a white card for Miriam. As we have done so far during this comp, as results come in, I will uh, give them to you all to read. Well, no, not read. I will read them to you. Excuse me. Still waking up here a little bit. My apologies. Looks like the final time was 4.17. We have the results from the first heat. Uh, in lane B, Alia Al Salem of Kuwait, 3.55, white card. Lane C, we have Irini Ana Langonica of Greece, 251, white card, my Abder Albader of Kuwait, Lane D in the 55 plus division, 240, or sorry, 442, excuse me, uh, white card, and then in Lane E, Topak Toprak of Turkey, the juniors, 318, white card. Nicely done. You may notice that we have some fairly long times in between our uh, last three minutes initial tops, top times. This is in order to make sure that the uh, divers have enough time to uh, get to the competition zone while also being aware that the previous heat of divers may uh, hold their breath for an extended period of time. Uh, all of the start lists for this competition have been created based on personal bests that were submitted to the judges on the first day upon registering. Uh, so, as such, there have been no announced performances. And hopefully in this way we are able to be a little bit more time efficient in some ways. Uh, if we know divers' personal best, uh, they can be put into a time slot with other similar personal bests. So far we are seeing, seeing that. Okay, so the next heat, heat three, we have Samira Kalmafard of Iran in lane A. We have Kitang of China in lane B. Lucy Budinova of Czech Republic in lane C. Mary Avestian of Armenia in lane D. Sabine Mandromero of Ecuador in lane E. In Sadedi Fatima of Iran in lane F.
Three seconds. Kitang in uh, lane B, or Olivia, as she likes to be called. 20 seconds. Uh, wasn't originally expecting to do static, uh, but she's decided to give it a try, and uh, as she, she was saying earlier today, uh, that she's just here for the experience. Five, and four, for sure, three, doing, two, one, doing competition five. at this level and trying your best and seeing what you can do with the extra and added stress of having Plus cameras on you, having so many judges around you, having so many other athletes around you. Uh, this is very different from a, a local competition Plus 20 seconds. where there's a team of four Plus to six judges. 26, 27, 28, 29, 29 30. 30. There are a lot more moving parts at a world championship like this, plus the the added, you know, just the added stress of it being a world championship. Uh, and so coming to to a competition like this with the goal of just experiencing it, learning the ropes, and having a good time is a fantastic way to sort of bomb-proof yourself, not only for smaller competitions. Uh, but also to, ooh, there we go, that's louder, uh, but also to be more prepared in the future if you may want to do a national or world record attempt at some point, doing it at your second or third or fourth world championship where you already know how things generally work, you're more prepared, is a fantastic option. There we see Olga with Mary. We'll sometimes see the coaches touching an athlete. Uh, that is um, the option that these athletes have to be supported by their coaches. Uh, you can remind them to relax to if the coach notices if they're holding any tension in their shoulders or in their neck. Uh, the coach can either, as determined beforehand, either tell them, relax your shoulders, relax your neck, or they can give a little tap in an area where they know that there's tension. It's a nice little underwater shot there. <clears throat> the water is around 27.2 degrees Celsius, I believe. We are getting to the point in the breath hold where we're starting to see the divers move a little bit. Uh, this is, for those of you who uh, aren't familiar, uh, a contraction. It is when the intercostal muscles, uh, the muscles that you use to take a breath, uh, take a breath in and also uh, exhale, there's two different muscles uh, in the intercostals, the external and internal. Uh, and I believe it's the, in, the external that squeeze, the internal expand. Um, the intercostals contract and that puts pressure on the lungs. And then as a result, since you're holding your breath, the air cannot escape out through the mouth, but there is the diaphragm that is sitting below the lungs. So as the intercostals contract, it, it squeezes the thoracic cavity. There he is up. Uh, and a contraction can sometimes be seen uh, by the diaphragm popping out, the stomach popping out. We will also see, there we see it right now. We see shoulders moving a little bit. You can see 
more specifically in the ribs movement there. Yay, looks like a white card for Mary. So be sure to watch for contractions as we uh, continue on. Sandetti, also up. Yeah, keep an eye out for contractions, because each diver experiences them in slightly different ways. Uh, especially as the diver continues their breath hold for longer and longer periods of time. Excuse me, as a diver experiences contractions for a longer and longer period of time, they do have a, ten a tendency to get more intense. So in the beginning, when you first get them, they will be small, generally in control, uh, but then as you go for longer and longer, they will get stronger, bigger, more intense. Uh, and later on today, we will probably see some uh, pretty intense contractions. contractions and the urge to breathe uh, do come from the buildup of CO2, not from a lack of oxygen. Uh, this is something really important to know. Uh, CO2 being built up in the body has nowhere to go because we're keeping it in our lungs. And while we don't have receptors necessarily that keep track of how much oxygen we have in our body, we do have receptors that keep track of how much CO2 we have in our body. And our body does not like CO2. And it wants us to exhale it and get rid of it. And so that's why we experience contractions. That is the body trying to expel that CO2 from our lungs. Additionally, the urge to breathe uh, would be also caused by CO2, uh, and that is another response to high CO2 in the body where we are trying our best to, our body's trying to get us out of that situation. It's trying to make us feel uncomfortable. It's trying to make us feel like we shouldn't be there. Last three minutes.
Sorry about that. I am back. Working on trying to get a timer up on the screen if we can. And if not, I will just do my best to use my own stopwatch. So at least we have some kind of idea as divers come up of what we're looking at. From heat two, we do have results in. Uh, Miriam Akatan of the weight, two minutes and 12 seconds, white card. Amel Al Shekel of Saudi Arabia, 355, white card. Lujian Almadi, Saudi Arabia, 245, white card. Miriam Alveri, Saudi Arabia, 409, white card. And Carol Carrasco of Chile, 3. 08 white card. One minute and 30 seconds. Four, we have in lane A, Shoko Kobayashi of Japan. Lane B, Rowaidi, sorry, excuse me. Uh, Rowaida Alveri of Saudi Arabia. Lane C, we have Alia Akar of Turkey. Lane D, we have Annie Hoygaard of Denmark. Lane E, we have 30 seconds. Bilgi, ooh, every time. Bilgi's last name gets me. 20 seconds. I think I actually wrote it down. There we go. Bilgi Jinji Jirari. 10 seconds. Jirai. Oh, I'm going to have to ask Five, her. 5, 4, 3, uh, two, And then in one, lane F, Ava Hines of Germany. Competing in the 55 plus division and Alia Akar, Lane C in the Juniors Division. Plus 10 seconds. Plus 20 seconds. Plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay. in the enjoyable part of the statics. Uh, this part of the breath hold is obviously quite nice in that you have a full breath of air, lungs are totally full, there's no CO2 buildup. You started, you're nice and fresh. The world is your oyster. It's important to note that this time in static can either be, it can be really nice, it can also be torture. Um, it all comes down to what you do during this time in your mind. There are a great many mental techniques to be used in this beginning part of the static to keep your mind busy so that you don't start wondering, you know, what's the time or, you know, how long have I been down for? Uh, there are things like uh, attention deconcentration uh, by where you can keep your eyes open and uh, focus on one point, but then notice in your periphery around you, all the different things that you see. So for a diver doing attention to concentration right now, 
they might see, okay, looking straight down in front of me, there's a point on the little stand that I'm going to focus on, but then looking up, I can see the wall in front of me. Going over to the side, I can see the feet of the safety, but they're really kind of fuzzy. Um, moving down, I can see the bottom and the end of the stand going down to the bottom of the pool. Maybe I can see a few of the blue tiles down at the bottom. Moving to the other side, I can see my coach sort of walking and moving around a little bit, coming back up again. Uh, or instead, you can focus on uh, maybe noises going on around you. This is probably not something that you can do in the pool, as everything is muffled and sounds like it's coming at you from all directions anyway. Uh, another thing that you can do during that beginning part is just do some kind of visualization. Sorry, excuse me, I'm still getting over my cough a little bit. Uh, you can do a little bit of a visualization by where you send your mind out and go do something, go imagine something. Uh, you can imagine yourself flying through the through a forest. Uh, you can see yourself walking up a mountain. You can visualize yourself hanging out with friends, with family. But in visualization, an important thing to do and to remember, where we see the time there, coming up on 4.15. We, we do still have a few athletes in the water. With visualization, the most important thing for you to remember is that you need to make it as real as possible in your mind. And what do I mean by that? I mean trying to include the senses, uh, trying to smell the damp earth beneath your feet as you walk through a forest, uh, noticing the warm wind gently moving across your face as you fly. trying to recruit as many senses as you possibly can. Ooh, see a little bit of a samba here. I believe that is Ilgi. Oh no, that was Annie. Looking okay. Let's see what uh, card the judges give her. White card, okay. Amazing. Way to hold it together. Yeah, what we saw there was a LMC, uh, or a Samba, or a loss of motor control, uh, which is basically the interim point between being conscious and losing consciousness. So as we saw there, uh, there was muscle tension, and then no muscle tension, and then muscle tension, and then no muscle tension. And in doing that, uh, your body's basically fighting to try and maintain consciousness while also not having enough oxygen to keep the body conscious. And at that time, recovery breaths are such an important important, important piece of keeping yourself aware and conscious. Recovery breaths are the kinds of breaths that we take to purge CO2 from the body while also adding oxygen back in along with not dropping the partial pressure of gases in the lungs to the point where you lose consciousness anyway. There's a lot that I said there. Um, but with, uh, if we remember back to high school, we talked about partial pressures and gas laws. And we learned that gases want to flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. They always want to sort of equal themselves out. And so, 
when we take a full breath of air in, uh, we know that the ambient air has 21% oxygen in it. And inside our body, as we exhale, we usually have around 16% oxygen uh, still in the air that is in our lungs. Uh, so what happens, as we take a full breath in, that's 21% of oxygen, or that gas is 21% oxygen in our lungs. That gas, because 16% in the blood, that oxygen will start to flow into the blood. Uh, which is good, that's what we want. We want the oxygen in our blood to be able to be delivered around to the body for our muscles, for our consciousness, for our brain, all that good stuff. Uh, similarly, uh, CO2 is higher in the blood than it is in the lungs, in the ambient air. And so, at the same time, as gas is, as oxygen is flowing into the blood, CO2 is flowing out of the blood into the lungs, which we then exhale. Great. That's what happens normally each time we breathe. Oxygen is going into the blood, CO2 going into the lungs. Awesome. When we do a very long breath hold, over time we are using up the oxygen in our lungs. That is getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. To the point where the amount of oxygen in both our lungs and our blood is about equal. Uh, and so as they both go down, or as one goes down, the other goes down as well. Then, what happens if we come up and we exhale? The gas that is in our lungs, the oxygen, is pushed out. There is less oxygen in our lungs than there is in the blood. Therefore, the oxygen in our blood will move into our lungs. That is not good. That's not where we want the oxygen, right? So, that is why we don't fully exhale as free divers when we come up from a dive. We always do recovery breaths. Recovery breath is where you exhale a little bit, maybe about 20% of the air in your lungs, and then you inhale again. Exhale a little bit, inhale. Exhale a little bit, inhale. In doing that, where we normally would have dropped the partial pressure of oxygen in our lungs down to a point that's lower than what's in our blood, we instead remove some of the CO2 and immediately suck it back in again, adding some more oxygen in. So that oxygen is now higher than the oxygen in our blood. So it starts to flow again. Again, a little bit of a partial exhale, full inhale. A little bit higher oxygen, more to flow into the blood. Continuing, continuing, continuing. So all of that said, that's what we will be looking for quite a bit today in our athletes. We are looking for strong recovery breaths. And I no doubt, have no doubt at all that we will see some divers today who do not take strong recovery breaths. And I have no doubt that we will see some of them have LMCs, maybe have blackouts. And it's one of those things that is so important for us to train during our training because recovery breaths can become a habit. They become something that happens uh, whether we are conscious or not. Uh, and so if you practice taking recovery breaths and you're in a situation where you're not fully conscious, your body will take over knowing, okay, I'm at the end of my dive, it's time for me to do recovery breaths. Whereas if you practice just doing a exhale, you will do that when you black out. And that is not safe. Okay, all right, let's see. So I have results from heat three here. Uh, we have Mari, Evastian, Abit, Abit Sian, excuse me, of Armenia, 357, white card, Sabine Manz Romero of Ecuador, 420, I believe, ah, uh, blackout, unfortunately. Uh, and then we have Sanderi Fatimeh of Iran, 430, white card. The 
results of Heat 4 are coming in now. Okay, moving down the list. For Heat 5, we have in lane A, Feruz El Medawi of Greece. In lane B, we have Ute Weinerich of Germany, competing in the 60-plus Masters division. In lane C, we have Gemma Via Catala, Catala, excuse me, of Spain. We have in lane D, Josephine Fischer of Germany. Lane E, Laurence Gugin of France. And F, Birgit Vesman of Germany. Lawrence and Birgit both competing in the 55 plus division as well. From the last heat, uh, heat four, Shoko Kobayashi of Japan, 432 white card, lane B, Ruida Aloveri of Saudi Arabia, 437, fortunately a red card due to blackout. Uh, Ali Akar, Turkey, being the juniors division, 433, white card, Annie Hoygaard, Denmark, competing uh, seniors, five minutes on the dot. Uh, Milgi of Turkey, 326, white card, and Eva Hines of Germany, competing 55 plus, 430, white card. Please do show your support for the athletes in the chat. A lot of them do go back to look at their performance to check for any kind of uh, errors they may have made or just to get content for uh, the gram. And it's always nice for them to see the support that you guys give in the chat. 20 seconds. that Feyruz was at. Uh, she took first place in both Static and Bifins, which is the national championships in Greece. I don't have any personal best information, uh, but hopefully we'll have a new personal best here for Feyruz. Always nice to see. Uh, for Ute, we have a I believe she holds the uh, world record in static for uh, the Masters 60 plus division at 5.30. Uh, the notes are cut off on my sheet, so that's nice. I also have Josephine. Uh, who is in lane D. Her personal best is 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Birgit, we have a personal best static of 518. Uh, excuse me, no, I believe that is a national record in the 55 plus for Germany at 5.18. Uh, I unfortunately don't have any information on the other athletes. Uh, 
Beirouz wants to thank her family, her husband, and two boys who are always at her side and who are always so supportive of her coming to all these competitions. Uh, she does quite a bit both in depth and pool. Uh, and it's important to note these sacrifices that these divers make in order to come to these competitions. Uh, many of them, most of them, have jobs, full-time jobs, uh, and they work very hard to get sponsorships and to uh, come to these events. So one of the best things you can do to support our athletes uh, in a very easy way is to go onto Instagram, look up their names, and just give them a follow. Uh, most of them are on Instagram as their name freediver or underscore freediver or something having to do with water uh, in their name. Give them a follow. See if they're teaching any courses anywhere nearby. Ask them how they're doing. And in chucking them a follow, that makes them more attractive to sponsors, uh, which means they then have more time to actually compete and to train, which means we get more, better, stronger national and world records. things that both Ute and Feirouz note about free diving, what they like about it is the fact that there are no age restrictions. This is not a sport where uh, you have a very limited competition uh, history or campaign. Woo, we got some blue lips on Ute. Uh, that is cyanosis. That is what happens when the body runs low on oxygen. You can begin to see blueness in the lips, the fingers and extremities get pale. Uh, that is one of the sure signs that, ooh, Feru's having some big contractions there. Uh, that's one of the sure signs that you are running low on oxygen. That is Birgit. Feirouz is up. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Recover. We may see today a little bit of uh, jiggling around from our athletes. That is, that occurs when, again, low oxygen, the body is getting close to its sort of shut down uh, mode to conserve oxygen for the brain. All right, we have Birgit with a white card at, let's see, what does my stopwatch say? At around 5.45, I believe. Currently at 6.00. 25 from official top. Looking at Josephine, I believe now. Being coached by Finn, our resident fire juggler and uh, aerial acrobatist. As you can see, we are having some pretty big contractions now. Okay. Lawrence is up. Beautiful performance there. Roughly around seven minutes. Again, remember the world record uh, for CMAS is set by Veronica Didis at 8.53.
Okay. We have Josephine also up. See Finn with his arms out to his sides, letting him, letting everybody know that he's not supporting his athlete at all. Air temperature is around 23 degrees Celsius. Very nice. Around 23 Celsius. Uh, yeah, 22, 23. Water is 27.1 Celsius. Yeah, solid, solid performance by Josephine there. Okay. Let's see, do I have times yet? No, not yet. Yes, we are working on trying to get a timer on screen for you guys. I will do my best to keep track of the time for you and give you little updates along the way. Up next we have in lane A, Beatrice Rovier of France. Lane B we have Isabel Sanchez Aran of Spain. Lane C, Natalia Domoshenko of Serbia. Lane D we have Sylvie Gildson of France. Lane E, we have Heike Schwartner of Germany. And in lane F, we have Julia Kozerska of Poland. Last three minutes. Looking at Isabella now, getting ready for her dive with her coach. Carol Karch to the right with Yulia. The 
Natalia there laying on her back. As I said before, athletes can get ready however they like. Some love to just lay on their backs and be totally still and floaty. Uh, others prefer to lay with their face in the water. Uh, a lot of divers will do this in order to turn on the dive response. As we've said a few times now, there are receptors in our face and in our cheeks uh, that can sense when our face is in the water. And Jeez. as a result, one of the things that our bodies will do is turn on the mammalian dive response, which is a series of adaptations that our body has to prepare us for breath hold and submersion in the water. Uh, for those who have taken a freediving course before, you know that uh, this entails <clears throat> the blood moving away from the extremities to the core, like what would normally happen when you get very cold. One minute and three uh, seconds. The body's trying to conserve that temperature uh, for the core, to keep your, your core uh, safe and working. It prioritizes the core, the internal organs, the heart, over fingers and toes, which are a lot more resilient. Similarly, that's what happens with the uh, MDR. Peripheral vasoconstriction, the blood gets moved away, prioritized for the core. Except in this case, rather than keeping the temperature high, uh, we're conserving Whoa. oxygen. Additionally, what will happen with the maybe the dive response, excuse me. <clears throat> Oof. What will happen in addition is that blood will move to surround your lungs. Uh, this isn't really something that helps us in uh, pool disciplines, but it protects our lungs from uh, pressure changes as, as you go deeper and deeper. Uh, the heart rate will also decrease uh, with the mammalian dive response. And with that, those are the two main things that, especially in static, we are trying to go Five, after. We're trying to four, three, slow down the heart rate. Two, one, top time. And we're also trying to turn on the dive response so the blood stays for the core and we're not using it unnecessarily in our fingers, our toes, our arms, and our legs, which we're not moving. This discipline is purely oxygen conservation and management, Plus 20 seconds. along with dealing with buildup of CO2. Plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. All right. This is the final heat for the women. Beatrice has a personal best of Seven minutes and 32 seconds. Uh, I believe Isabella just set a new Spanish record uh, at 7.03, I want to say. Uh, Heike Schwartner of Germany has a personal best static. I believe a national record set at eight minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, and I unfortunately don't have information for the other divers. But we will definitely be seeing some big, big breath holds here now. As I was saying earlier about statics, uh, the first part of the breath hold is usually very nice. It's very relaxed, as you can see. Uh, the mind is free to sort of wander as it chooses. We're seeing our first contraction there from Natalia. Uh, at around 2.15. Uh, but then as we shift over, uh, you can begin to feel the con first contraction actually wanting to come. 
Uh, you can sometimes feel tension in the diaphragm, maybe in the ribs, maybe an urge or desire to swallow. Uh, what we want to try and do is hold off that first contraction for as long as we can. Uh, once that first contraction starts, it's sort of the, you enter the next phase of the breath hold. Uh, by where it becomes more about managing your contractions, managing discomfort, and sort of managing the urge to breathe. Because the urge to breathe, I would argue, is separate from contractions. You can experience contractions and not have an urge to breathe. And similarly, you can have an urge to breathe and not experience contractions. And so as we move into the sort of second part of the breath hold, after we have our first contraction, I believe we're looking there at Sylvie. Uh, still looking pretty good. I don't think she's experiencing any contractions. Or if she is, she's experiencing very small ones. We're at 340 now. Uh, as we shift over into that uh, next part of the breath hold, it becomes about managing contractions. So there are different techniques that you can use to manage them. One is physically trying to block them, either by putting the back of the tongue up against the soft palate. If you run your tongue along the roof of your mouth, you can feel it is hard at, towards the front of your teeth. And then after a certain point, it gets soft. That is your soft palate. What you can do is you can push the tongue up against the soft palate, and that will block contractions for a little bit. But what will happen is that it will also increase the intensity of the contractions. So rather than having a few small ones, you have one big one. Uh, other people will intentionally stick out their diaphragm as they experience a contraction or right before they experience a contraction to try and uh, sort of counteract that sensation. Uh, others, other people, like myself included, I don't like to block contractions. I prefer to have small uh, but more frequent ones. Uh, I try and make it a game of once I have my first contraction, keeping them as small as I possibly can. Uh, I like to remind myself that a contraction is a contraction of the muscles. And as such, after the contraction that is involuntary happens, the muscles relax. And so after each contraction, Rather than focusing on the tightness and the tension, I focus on the release. And that release sort of helps keep me loose. I sort of imagine almost like a wave of relaxation coming off of the intercostals, flowing across the body, with each one almost feeling the movement flow over me like a wave. Uh, something that you can do after uh, the contractions are no longer sort of blockable or no longer relaxed and still enjoyable is sometimes called the, the fight phase. Uh, I don't particularly like that term because it has a negative connotation and I don't like to attribute negative connotations to the freediving that I do. Uh, but some people call it the fight phase. Uh, in that phase, it basically becomes a point now where you are resisting the urge to come up. Uh, and in that time, it becomes, each diver is different. But for me personally, I like to count contractions not in individual numbers of like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, but I'll count them in groups. So I'll go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Uh, and in doing that, it gives me a rhythm to focus on while not actually keeping track of the time or the numbers. Because uh, in static, for many people, once you start knowing where you are in the breath hold, it's like Julia is up at around seven minutes. Once you start really worrying about the time, that is when, for a lot of people, you can really, uh, the breath hold starts to go downhill. Yeah, seeing a little bit of a 
head shake there. Static is one of those disciplines that is heavily influenced by your mind. Uh, we do have a white card for Julia, though. So if you're having a bit of a struggle, we see Isabella also up there, around 7.30. If your mind is also struggling, it uh, can be quite tough to continue the breath hold once uh, negative ideas or connotations have, uh, uh, have sort of taken hold. We're at 8.11 now. Still have a few divers going strong. I think we're looking at Sylvie there. Eight thirty. Really love to see some of the other divers who are still down. Okay. Sylvie is. Oh, I believe that's Beatrice. Beatrice is up. We're at 8.50. All right, 8.50 on the dot, 8.52. Wow, looking really good. Very strong performance there. From Sylvie. I believe we're looking at 852, uh, which is one second off from the current world record held by Veronica Adidas. Again, I will get official numbers from the judges momentarily. Let me check what I have from the previous heat. Okay, yes. So from the previous heat, heat number five, we have Feiruz Al Nadawi of Greece, 525 white card. Ute Weinricht of Germany, 60 plus division, 435 white card. Uh, Gemma did not start. Josephine Fischer, Germany, 702 white card. Laurence Gugin of France, 55 plus, 6 minutes and 47 seconds. And Birgit Weissmann of Germany, 55 plus, 506. I believe the 55, uh, the uh, 647 set by Lawrence is a new Masters 55 plus record. Uh, again, we'll have to double check all that, and as always, the results will be posted on the CMAS Freediving Instagram page and the Freediving uh, CMAS Facebook uh, group later on today. Uh, you can see all the results there from the previous competitions. Uh, once the results have been fully ratified by CMAS after uh, anti doping control and after uh, the competition, the results will be updated on the CMAS website. Okay, we do have a brief break. Let's see here. We do a very brief break. Do we? It actually doesn't look like we have a break. Never mind. I guess I don't get a bathroom and walk around break. I will just sit here. Hi, Youngju. Good to see you. Uh, Youngju is one of the competitors here. Uh, she's taking a break today. Uh, just set uh, two new national records for Korea. Uh, in both dynamic no fins and bi fins, and is hoping to set a new one in the dynamic tomorrow as well. It 
if you guys do have any questions, please do feel free to post them in the chat. Uh, today is a long day, and today is a day where uh, there's not too terribly much to see. So if you guys have any questions, I am happy to answer them and try and keep the party going. Ooh, Youngju asks, what do I think about when I do static? Okay, I think what I'll do is I will walk you guys through my own personal static routine. Um, so, first thing, uh, in my warm-up, I am not thinking about anything. My warm-up consists of two breath holds on functional residual capacity, FRC, where basically, if you take a full breath in, and you let the air rush out, and then you do a breath hold on that, that is FRC. What I'm doing, I'm not holding for a certain amount of time. I'm holding until I feel my dive response turn on. I have, I know the sensations of feeling the peripheral vasoconstriction, the blood moving from my extremities to my core. I can feel my heart rate slow down. I can feel the urge to get out of the water. And that's what I'm looking for. I want to turn on that dive response because I know that that means my body is fully prepared for the dive. Uh, I know a lot of people will uh, hold for specific periods of time. Uh, I personally prefer to go based on feeling because each day is different. Some days I might need a minute and a half for my uh, dive response to kick on. Other days I need three minutes on FRC for that dive response to turn on. So being able to feel what is good for me is the best way for me to be prepared for my static. After that, uh, I come to the competition area and I literally zone out. I do not think about anything. I barely hear the countdown and I just sit. I sit and my mind is blank. Uh, I know that's pretty tough for a lot of people to do, uh, but it comes with repetition and practice. Uh, other people obviously will you know, think about loved ones, they will think about their dive, they'll think about what they'll do afterwards. Everyone is different. Uh, once time starts, uh, or as the time is about to start, I will do a forced exhale, and then a full inhale in, and then I will do some packs. And those packs, I'll do maybe 10 of them, and then I will start my breath hold. I'll put my face in the water, and I will hold my breath. In the first part of that breath hold, that relaxing part, I will walk my old security route when I used to work third shift security at a performing arts center. I will walk the evening tour where I will walk through this entire building, checking all the doors. And as I said before, with visualization, you wanna make it as real as possible. So I feel my steps going from marble floors to carpet, then to cement, then outside where I'm kicking leaves or walking on snow. And then I will smell the different smells in the theater of you know, air freshener, or there was always this one hallway that smelled kind of like cinnamon uh, that was always a very strong smell. Uh, hearing the sound of the doors rattling, hearing the sound of the keys, making that as real as possible. And I will walk this route in my head and that gets me to about uh, four and a half or five minutes on uh, my breath hold. Halfway through, I begin to experience my first contractions. Uh, as I do, I keep them very small, keep them relaxed working again on just relaxing and letting that, uh, that relaxation after the contraction wash over my whole body and keep me calm and still. After around five minutes, that's when I begin to sort of shift over into uh, a bit more of a focused uh, contraction, focusing more on the contractions, uh, trying to keep them small, 
trying to keep them uh, in control, playing around with moving air around my mouth. That's always sort of a fun thing to do to keep me busy. And then at around six minutes, I enter my own personal, quote, fight phase. Um, they're just stronger contractions for me. Uh, in that, that is when I begin counting contractions in groups of three or four or five or six. And usually at that point, I have heard from whoever's coaching me that uh, <clears throat> where I am in the breath hold. And they'll say, they'll give me a random number to count. So they'll say, okay, give me three sets of five contractions. So I'll do that. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, and so on. And then I'll give an okay sign and say, okay, cool. Give me two rounds of seven. Okay, cool. One, two, three, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then towards the very end, uh, that's when you come up. Give my recovery breaths, okay sign, then hopefully white card. So that is what I think about when I do my own personal statics. Uh, again, everyone else, everyone is very different. Everyone has their own things that they do. That just works for me. Uh, what I always tell my coaching clients is that what works for you is not something that will just sort of like immediately pop out at you. You need to always be sort of working and trying new things. You need to always be adding more tools to your toolbox. And in order to do that, you need to do a lot of practice. You need to do a lot of static training. Uh, and this is something that um, <clears throat> not only comes from or not only helps with static, but it also helps with all other disciplines as well. If you have this sort of uh, baseline anchor of what relaxation feels like when your body is totally relaxed and you have that ingrained in your mind, you can use that as an anchor point for when you are doing a dynamic dive, when you're doing a depth dive, to sort of think about uh, what you want to be feeling and where you are now and think about where what the differences are between the two and so I notice okay my anchor point my shoulders are very relaxed I don't feel very relaxed in my shoulders right now so let's try and relax the shoulders uh, or um, my mind is racing right now but normally my mind is quite calm so let's try and calm the mind down having this anchor point lets you know what your baseline is and lets you sort of be able to actually be aware of how you can relax more but if you don't practice and you don't have that anchor as a strong anchor you don't know what you're uh, where you're holding tension you don't know oh I'm holding tension in my neck or my shoulders or my mind is actually racing you can't it's harder to catch yourself if you guys know what I mean so yes there we go I uh, actually asked some of my friends earlier today, uh, uh, some of my other competitive friends, what uh, questions they have about static. And Kristen Kuba, uh, one of the record holders in the US for depth, asks, why are they so hard? Um, excuse me, that is a good question. Uh, I would argue that statics are not necessarily the hard thing. The hard thing is how we train them. And I know this is probably going to ruffle some feathers, uh, but I personally do not believe that in static training we need to push to the point of having a bad time, to the point where we are miserable, where we hate statics. Because that is oftentimes what we associate with statics. We associate it with having a bad time, discomfort, and it sucks. So, in saying that, the way that I train is on set departure tables. I don't do CO2 or O2 tables. Uh, I do set departure tables, which are basically where you have intervals where every set amount of time 
you do a you start a new breath hold. So if, for example, we are doing two minute intervals, in that time you decide how long you hold your breath for and how long you recover for. If you hold your breath for a minute 30, you have 30 seconds to recover before the next breath hold begins. If you hold for a minute, you have one minute to breathe before the next breath hold begins. You have control of both when you uh, start the breath hold, or how long you hold for, and how long you recover for. Whereas with CO2 or O2 tables, you do not have control of one or the other. And I personally do not believe that that is a beneficial way to train because it, one, takes the control away from you of saying when you are ready to stop or if you want to keep going. Uh, that is something that you know we always talk about in teaching that you need to feel uh, you need to listen to your body, you need to not push beyond your comfort zone. And yet we have these tables that are telling us, regardless of what you're feeling, you need to hold to this number. Uh, that amount, uh, mentally, can do a lot of damage uh, and can be very taxing on the mind. And so while they are effective tools, uh, oftentimes what I find is they are quite a easy way to also hit a wall, to burn out, to burn the enjoyment of static out of you. Like I can sit here perfectly honestly tell you that I've never had a bad static session. And I, I have that because I always listen to my body and I know on some days, okay, today's a really good day. I'm, I'm feeling really good. Uh, I know what my normal times are, but I feel really good, so I'm going to hold for a little bit longer today and see how I go. Or other days, ooh, today's breath holds really don't feel very good. Ugh, I'm, I'm not really enjoying it very much. Okay, I'll hold for a little bit less time and have a little more recovery time. With static training, the most important thing is having is doing a lot of breath holds and sitting with uh, either high CO2 or low oxygen for a long period of time. As with all types of training, we want to put stress and, and um, we, want to, we want to stress the body's systems as that's how our body adapts and improves itself. When we lift weights, we put stress on the muscles, our muscles get built back stronger. When we train the body with uh, hypercapnia or uh, hypoxia, we are training CO2 tolerances and O2 tolerances. Uh, the body learns we're sitting with CO2 for a long time. I better get better at dealing with it. Uh, I'm sitting with low O2 for a long time. I better get more efficient with using it. That is the important part with, with training that we want to be doing. And with CO2 and O2 tables, I don't personally believe you get as much bang for your buck as you do with set departure tables. Uh, it's also important to note that with set departure tables, you are Jeez. able to have contractions. You're able to have the urge to breathe. Like my, it's based on comfort. And if you are comfortable with contractions, you can hold your breath still. It's as long as you are having a good time and you're comfortable, is you're you're doing okay. Uh, and again, that oftentimes is missing in CO2 and O2 tables. You're pushing beyond a point where you're happy or comfortable. Sure, I'll get some hate for that, uh, but One minute thirty seconds. I don't care. I have seen some amazing results. My clients have seen amazing results, and people actually enjoy doing statics that way. Uh, so I'm gonna keep doing it. So, Kristen, why are they so hard? Because you're probably pushing to a point where you're not quite ready mentally or physically yet. Uh, dial it back, One do some set departure tables, and enjoy. Enjoyment should be the key. Uh, where do you find the starter list for today? Starter list should be on the CMAS Freediving Instagram account or the CMAS uh, Facebook page. Really quickly before we begin, uh, I do have the results from the last heat for the women. Uh, 
heat six, we have Beatrice Rivière of France, seven minutes and 30 seconds. seconds. White card, yep. Uh, lane B, we have Isabella Sanchez Aran, Spain, 722, which is, I believe is a new national record for Spain. White card, Natalia Domashenko, Serbia, 342, white card, oof. Again, some days, just not doing it. Uh, lane D, Sylvie Gilson, France, 736, white card, lane E, Heike Schwartner, Germany. Where's my timer? Oop, 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 there we go, okay. Uh, Hercules Schwartner, Germany, 835, white card. Well, it's a little bit off from what we had written down. Uh, 835, still a incredible dive. Uh, and Julia Kozerska, Poland, 638, white card. So all white cards on that last round. Plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, And in this heat, 30. we have in lane B, Mohamed Al Harmi of Burundi. Oh, sorry, Brunei, excuse me. Uh, we have in lane C, Nacho Peral of Spain, competing in the 55 plus division. We have Gorkum Gedek in lane D of Turkey. Uh, lane E, Rovier Skoric, Skoric of Croatia. And lane F, we have Francisco Alberto Quesada Bueno of Spain. Uh, hopefully we will move from seeing this interview uh, back to the competition happening shortly. Oh, excuse me. I've been trying to shake a cough for the last two months and I am just not succeeding. <laughs> Looks like we do have two did not starts uh, with uh, let's see here. Check my notes quickly. Okay. So, yes, we have two did not starts in lanes E and F, Rovier Skoric and Francisco uh, Quesada. Difficult to see from my angle who else is in the water. I have a big pillar sitting in front of me and then a wall blocking uh, lane A and B. I will be right back. Hey team, I apologize for that interview still going. Uh, for those who don't know, we are also broadcasting uh, live in Kuwait. Uh, and the programming, uh, there's some additional programming going on. 
Uh, looks like our athletes have just finished for heat one, though. Excuse me, heat, uh, da -da 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 -da, heat seven. Uh, again, as results come in, I will let you know what they are. Let's see, going back to the questions. Ooh, here's a good one. So, Lily Crespi asks, to hyperventilate or not hyperventilate? That is the question. That is indeed the question. So, a little bit of background first. What is hyperventilation? Hyperventilation is any kind of breathing uh, more than what you would experience on uh, normal tidal breathing. Tidal breathing is the breathing that you're doing now while you're not thinking about breathing. Uh, with tidal breathing, the body is regulating how often you breathe, and it's based on the amount of CO2 that it senses in your lungs. Uh, and so our body is naturally regulating CO2 to the optimal amount that it wants, because our bodies do need CO2. Uh, without CO2, our body is not able to actually drop off oxygen. Uh, when oxygen moves from the lungs into the blood, it attaches to a, a hemoglobin molecule, or a hemoglobin um, yeah, molecule, and then gets sent out around the body with red blood cells. And then when it senses a uh, high amount of CO2 uh, or a greater acidity in the blood, it then releases the oxygen molecule to then go into uh, whatever muscle is being used, be broken down, or used to be broken down along with uh, whatever fuel source is using into energy. So in addition to CO2 being a byproduct of that Krebs cycle, that energy cycle, uh, it is also what allows the uh, red blood cells to drop off and release oxygen. Now, so CO2 is an important component of being able to actually drop off uh, oxygen, right? Now, when we hyperventilate, we are not, I want to repeat, we are not adding more oxygen. If we sit here normally, and we're breathing normally, our body is 100% oxygenated at all times as long as we are a healthy individual. Uh, if we're not, that's another story, but we're not talking about that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so healthy individuals are 100% oxygenated at all times. Uh, so we're not actually adding more oxygen into our body. What we are doing is we are purging CO2. Again, if we think back to concentration gradients, uh, CO2 is higher in the blood than it is in the lungs. So it wants to flow from the blood into the lungs. We exhale, we inhale again. Uh, still lower in the lungs than it is in the blood, CO2 comes out. Exhale, inhale. Jeez. CO2 comes out of the blood, exhale, inhale. Again and again and again. Uh, because that concentration wants to equal out. So we are purging CO2 when we hyperventilate. <clears throat> now, CO2 does bring on the urge to breathe. So oftentimes, it feels quite nice to hyperventilate. You will uh, hold off contractions for much longer. You will not experience the urge to breathe for much longer, or for a lot longer. Uh, and that's why with Wim Hof, uh, you can hold your breath for longer. Uh, it's because you have, it's not that you've increased your ability to hold your breath uh, with oxygen, it is that you're, you have less CO2 in your body, and so when the urge to breathe turns on is different. It's further off. Okay, here we go. Now we're watching the comp. Uh, so, One minute. when we hyperventilate, we push off the urge to breathe, but what also happens talking about, uh, again, the blood and hemoglobin, without CO2, our body can't release that oxygen to where it needs to go. As a result, we can actually black out sooner if we hyperventilate.
So, this becomes the balance that athletes need to think about. Three seconds. Hyperventilation, uh, to at least an extent, will help hold off contractions and the urge to breathe. Alternatively, it will decrease your overall breath hold time. You will not be able to hold your breath nearly as long as you could if you didn't hyperventilate uh, because the oxygen availability is lower. Something else to bring up is that uh, you can hypoventilate, meaning you underbreathe. You breathe less and you build up more CO2 in your body before you start the breath hold. Now, if hyperventilating makes you feel good, you can sort of see on the opposite side, hypoventilation will bring on contractions sooner. It'll be more intense. But similarly, the, since there's more CO2, there's more acidity in the blood, the hemoglobin is able to more easily release oxygen. So ideally, that is better uh, for a pure performance breath hold if you can handle the discomfort of contractions of the urge to breathe. So this whole question comes down to where do you need more help? Are you at the point in your breath hold where you need to hold your breath for longer? Uh, then in that case, don't hyperventilate, hypoventilate. If you are at a point where you do need some assistance with uh, holding off the urge to breathe or contractions or mentally you need some relaxation that comes from hyperventilation, then that is your uh, prerogative. Just be aware that hyperventilation can lead to blackout very quickly. Um, I played around with it once. Uh, I had a personal best of, I think, six minutes at the time. And when I hyperventilated for roughly 10 seconds, my breath hold went from experiencing contractions at around three and a half minutes and a max of six down to experiencing no contractions and blacking out at three minutes and 30 seconds with no signs of, of impending blackout at all. Uh, so if you think that hyperventil hyperventilation might be a thing that you want to try, please do first go see, uh, go work with a coach, go uh, talk to a, a freediving instructor and they can help you do it in a safe place uh, you would not do this during uh, any of your uh, Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3 courses. You would look at this at a competition level course, like the Wave 4 course that Molchanovs uh, has. Okay, we are on Heat 7. We have... Yes, Heat 7. We are on uh, Lane B, Muhammad Al Harami of Brunei. No, excuse me. We are on Heat 8. Got so distracted talking about hyperventilation. Just gets me, you know? Those who we are currently seeing, 3.37 right now on the time. Lane A, we had William Joy of China. Lane B, uh, Mohammed Elam Ramad Zaid of Malaysia. Lane C, Mohammed Azaki, Mohammed Nazari, Nazari of Malaysia. Lane D, Mohammed Amir uh, Perez Aid Fazal of Malaysia, Lane E, Anas Albalawi of Saudi Arabia, and Lane F, Al Hassan Man, also of Saudi Arabia. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, Ahmed. Ahmed, uh, what happens if Samba but no blackout red card? Uh, yes, that is correct, Renee. As long as your airways don't dip and you do the protocol in time, which is showing the OK sign, uh, that is a white card. Yes, the, the main thing is if your airways dip, uh, either your nose or your mouth, if that dips, then that is a red card disqualification, or if you are supported by the safety, uh, that is also a red card. a white card for Al Hassan Aman. As soon as times are available, I will let you guys know. Okay, so it looks like in our first heat, we had four divers uh, did not start. We only had Mohammed Al Rami of Brunei competing. Uh, three minutes and 45 seconds, red card uh, due to surface protocol, unfortunately. Again, surface protocol in CMAS is just showing an OK sign to the judges, keeping your airways above uh, the surface, all that good stuff. have to see if uh, William Joy started this morning. I haven't seen him walking around, so he may be saving himself instead for the 8 times 50 uh, As I said earlier today, uh, we did not have uh, announced times during this competition. Uh, usually what will happen is athletes will announce what they're going to do the previous night, uh, and will then be placed in the starting list accordingly. Um, here we are just doing it all based on personal bests, and a lot of what a lot of athletes will do is they will sign up for disciplines, just saying, "Okay, cool, I'm going to do this." And if they feel like it on the day, they then decide, "Actually, you know what? Today is not a static day. Today I want to do the eight times fifty, or screw the eight times fifty. I want to do static instead." And in that case, they DNS. <clears throat> ah, Elena, I am a coach myself. Uh, I don't have any athletes uh, in this comp, but there will be, uh, I believe, at least two uh, in Jeju later this uh, next month. So that's very exciting. Two minutes. All right, we're moving on to Heat 9 now. Let me shuffle around some notes. All right, Heat number 9. We have Frank Bayer of Germany competing the 55 plus division in lane A. Hans Jürgen Ledzen. Lenzen of Germany, 60 plus division, lane B. Uh, lane C, Hawadi Benzineb of Algeria. Uh, lane D, Ranma Sadek of Iran. Lane E, Leme Alvarez of Cuba, 50 plus division, and Salman Al Dosari of Saudi Arabia in lane F. Uh, Ahmed, it is up to each individual federation to keep track of their own records. CMAS keeps track of all the world records, and the uh, national records are kept by the national federation. Something that I try and gather at the start of each uh, event. 
30 30 seconds. Seconds. So <clears throat> I can go down the list and quickly give you guys some numbers. Twenty seconds. So I have for the world record, uh, CMAS has ten minutes and forty-five seconds set by yes. Branko Petrovic uh, of Croatia. Five, four, I also have three, three uh, two, for one, Austria. Telmar Kieler, 8 minutes 24 seconds. For Germany, Nikolai Gebhardt, 7 minutes 10 seconds. Japan, Noriyuki Yabe, 4.33. For Poland, Matt Molina, 9 minutes 35 seconds. Slovenia, Andrei Ropert, 10 23 seconds. Plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay. From the previous heat, we do have a DNS for William Joy of China, for Lane B. Uh, we'll go by last names. Uh, uh, Zaid of Malaysia, 224-61, white card. Mohamed Nazari, Malaysia, 246. Aid Faisal, Malaysia, 154. Anas Al-Balwi of Saudi Arabia, 306. And waiting on the last result now. Uh, 429 for Al-Sahan Man, which I believe might be a new national record for Saudi Arabia. And if so, congratulations. We're at 135 now. Please excuse my sniffles. going through a few questions here. Again, if you guys do have any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. Ah, here we go. There's a timer on the screen. So that will not be a indicator of the exact time uh, that our athletes have been down as we do uh, start uh, this timer based on top time. But it's to give you a general idea of where the athletes are. So they could be anywhere from this exact time to 30 seconds after it. Usually around 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, within 10 to 15 seconds of this time. that is Hans there coming up. Looks like Frank is also up. see our diver very slowly putting their feet down, not coming up right away. We see Hawari up, showing the OK sign. We do have Salman still down. 
moving one foot and the other foot. Hi, Evan. Good to see you. Four forty five now. About. So far, we've had some pretty spectacular breath holds. And looking forward to continuing even more. Something to note uh, with uh, static breath holds is that there's a bit of a tendency to want to try and, ooh, here we go, around 5.25, have to see what exactly that is. Hey, hey, all in about. Uh, when a diver puts their uh, feet down, that's generally a sign that they are getting close to being done. Uh, it's important during that time for an athlete to try and still stay as relaxed as possible. Uh, there's definitely a tendency to, uh, as you sort of stand up, uh, move a little bit to hold tension. All right. I believe that may be a new national record. Sure hope so. Uh, there's a tendency to want to, especially as the urge to breathe comes on, to try and, and wiggle around and, and move. Uh, and that's by design uh, through the uh, through the body's just sort of self-preservation uh, mechanics. Again, as I was saying earlier, our body doesn't want to sit with high levels of CO2. And so it wants us to get out of whatever situation we are in where we are holding our breath for whatever unknown reason uh, to it. And so as a result, uh, that's why when you're holding your breath for a long time, you may feel the need or urge to like put your arms above your head or wiggle your hands and your feet, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, it is important to try and not give in to that sensation and move. Because if you do so, you are disrupting the mammalian dive response, that peripheral vasoconstriction, where, that move, where your blood was moved from your extremities to your core, wiggling around starts to move it back again. And therefore, muscles start to use it that have no reason or need to use it. So when you can, try and, uh, try and ignore it, try and hold off for, uh, to reacting to it as much as you can. Yes, William, that is a good point. Uh, William says, I was training some of my students last night and they didn't seem impressed with our new national record of 200 meters uh, at 213. Once they tried it, they started to understand. Yes. Yeah, these, these athletes during all of these disciplines make it look pretty easy. Uh, but if you consider the average human can hold their breath comfortably for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe a minute, if they're like really relaxed with no training. And then you look at someone being like, oh yeah, I'm gonna bust out an easy seven minute breath hold coming up totally fresh looking and ready to go. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it does put things into perspective for sure. Last three minutes. Yeah, amazing. That's great to hear, William. Yeah, achieving two minutes of static for the first time is amazing. Very nicely done. Please send them my, my congratulations. <clears throat> there have been a few national records set, although I don't have them offhand what exactly they were. Uh, 
and in a moment I will see if I can get the placement, the unofficial placement. Again, all these results are unofficial, pending judges' review uh, later this afternoon. Okay, we have results from two minutes. Uh, heat eight still. So we are still waiting on results from heat nine. Coming up in heat ten, though, we have Mohammed Ablawi of Saudi Arabia competing in the 50 plus division. Alejandro Alperin of uh, Argentina, excuse me, 50 plus division. We have Andre Marazovic competing as a neutral athlete, also in the 50 plus division. We have Ahmed Azab of One Egypt competing in the seniors division. Arnaud Collard of Belgium. And then finally, in lane F, Frederick Mayer of Australia competing in the 55 plus division. So we are so moving along here. Yes, protocol is the same as all the dynamic disciplines. You show an OK sign to the judges, and that is it. You don't need to say, I'm OK. You don't need to remove any facial equipment. Just OK sign. That is enough. 30 seconds. Let's see, results for the female 55 plus. Let me see if I can get that for you. First place for 55 plus, we have Laurence Gougain of France at 6 minutes and 47 seconds. Plus 10 seconds. Uh, in first place for the seniors, we have Heike Schwartner of Germany, 8 plus 25. Uh, plus 25, 26, 27, 28. Sylvie Gilson, 736, I believe. And then in third, we have Beatrice Rovier of France, 730. Although I could be missing, missing a few times here. Elena, that is a good point to bring up. Uh, the water, even though it is 27 degrees, can still be quite cold if you're just laying there, not moving at all. Uh, and as such, and that's why we see lots of quite thick wetsuits. Uh, some of these I recognize as spearfishing wetsuits, uh, usually much thicker. Uh, when you're doing dynamic disciplines, you want a pretty thin wetsuit uh, in order to reduce the drag, but also to not add too much weight onto your body. Uh, in this discipline, we love to see thicker wetsuits to keep you warm, to keep you from shivering, because again, as soon as you start shivering, uh, that is your body uh, constricting muscles, activating muscles to try and warm you up and it's using oxygen to burn energy that it just puts into heat. And from, again, a perspective of wanting to conserve as much oxygen as possible to just hold your breath and stay conscious, that being the whole point of this discipline, uh, it does not behoove you to shiver. Let's see. I do have here that Fred, uh, or Tuna, 
uh, as he's known at home, uh, has a personal best of in static of 517. So checking my uh, messages, I have a message from a friend that says, how many contractions is too many? I would argue that you can never have too many contractions. Uh, but that is coming from someone who has mm, learned to love them. Can I say that? Will I get canceled by the internet if I say I love contractions? Um, Ah, excuse me, coughing again. Um, contractions are different for everybody, right? Some people can deal with them, others hate them. Uh, I have spent a long time holding my breath, experiencing contractions. It's to the point where they simply do not bother me. They are, there is no positive or negative association with them they are simply the next part of the breath hold. They are an indicator of how long I've been down for and when it's time for me to shift my mental techniques and mental focuses to something else. And so I would argue probably how many contractions is too many. Uh, that is a number that only you can answer yourself. For me, that number is however many I get on a dive. That is enough. For other people, some people who count contractions, that's up to you to decide. Uh, 20, 50, 100, it's, it's up to you to determine for yourself. Got a little bit of some bouncing going. Keep recovering. Keep recovering. Keep recovering. Please keep recovering. Go see a little head bob there. Teeny, teeny, teeny little LMC. Okay, there we go. Everyone's looking good. Hooray. Mohamed Al Balawi. Fred is up. We'll have to see what the what the result is here. I think we have a white card for Fred. I'll let you know as soon as I know. From Heat 9, the results are as follows. Uh, Frank Bayer, Germany, 55 plus, 422 white card. Uh, Hans Jürgen, uh, Hans Jürgen Lenzen, Germany, 60 plus, 324 white card. Hawadi Benzineb, Algeria, uh, 324 white card. Ranma Sadek. Uh, Iran did not start. Lemay Alvarez, Cuba, three minutes. White card. Salam Al Sadori, Al Dusari, excuse me, of uh, Saudi Arabia, 516. White card. I believe a white card. Uh, I believe a national record. see one of our Turkish athletes being dragged across the pool. 
one of the favorite parts of static athletes in the static competition is that free ride back or to the competition zone from the warm-up area. And similarly, many uh, deep divers also get that from their coaches. They, they do their warm-up dives, and then they just get dragged. And as someone who has experienced it, it is really nice. <laughs> again, with static, what we're trying to do is turn on that dive response. And again, peripheral vasoconstriction and bradycardia, low heart rate, are two of the most important things that we're looking for in static discipline itself. Both of those things can be easily undone from the warm-up period if you move. And so that's why we often see athletes that are very uh, particular about their warm-ups and being pulled across the pool, and also with having a lane line uh, to have to go over multiple lane lines. <clears throat> that's why we've taken all the lane lines out of the pool except for one to attach and keep the uh, lane, the areas designated for each individual competition zone. Ooh, Jordy, yes, I can definitely talk about that. Yeah, so, uh, the question is, why do athletes sometimes get uh, the shakes or samba after uh, the athlete has done recovery breaths? That is a good question. You would normally think that uh, because a diver has been breathing, they are okay that they're, they're all fine now. Um, because it does take a little bit of time for oxygenated blood to move through the body, even after they have started recovering, it can still take a little bit of time to see some shaking, or for it to actually get to the areas where it needs to go, specifically the brain. Um, and as a result, even if you are recovering, uh, if you have pushed to that far within your uh, within your limit, within that sort of uh, blackout point, those extra few seconds can be the difference. One minute and 30 seconds. Uh, which is partially why such strong recovery breaths are a big piece of the equation. Uh, and continuing to do recovery breaths after you have uh, after you have given the okay sign and have done your first three. Uh, it's very important to continue doing recovery breaths until you feel fully recovered. Uh, there's oftentimes a tendency to just, you know, we're, when we teach, we say at least three recovery breaths, uh, and then One if you're feeling minute. better, you can, you know, stop and breathe normally again. Uh, in these competitions, generally you want to keep recovering and basically hyperventilate after you are done, uh, just to fully uh, get all the CO2 out and also keep adding that oxygen back in. Because we were talking about before, uh, at, at rest, we are always 100% oxygenated. Uh, and so there's no reason to hyperventilate to add more oxygen in. Three seconds. With, uh, with uh, the, after coming out after a dive, 20 seconds. you obviously do not have 100% oxygenation in the body. And so hyperventilating will increase that amount into your body. Again, thinking back to the high concentrations and low concentrations. Five, if we four, breathe in 21% oxygen in the lungs, two, that goes one, into the blood. That number decreases in the lungs. If we wait longer, the less, um, the less concentrated that gas is in the lungs, the less it will flow into the blood. So we want to keep the concentrations high in the lungs. So we exhale, inhale again. That gas gets replenished. It's still 21% again. Goes down, 
into the, goes Plus into the blood, goes down a few percentage points. 28, 29, uh, exhale, inhale, 30. once again, back to 21%. So, yes. There we go. Uh, Mayo, that is a good question. What is a good static time in such an event? Um, I want to actually avoid answering that question. Um, a good time is we can we can look at the current world records. Current world records for men are set at 10:45 uh, at CMAS in uh, by uh, Branko Petrovic. And uh, for the women, 8.53 by Veronica Adidas. But that is not necessarily an indicator of what a good static is for a competition or for you. Um, uh, we're thinking of the podium. Uh, that is a good question. It depends on the athletes that are at a competition. Uh, sometimes, at a local competition, five minutes is more than enough to get first. Other times, yes, Evan, Evan, that is correct. Good time is the one that achieves a white card. Uh, if you're going for placement in a world championship like this, generally you're looking at the, uh, generally the nine to ten minute range for men, uh, seven to eight minute mark for women, but that is... I'm very reluctant to give you that answer because each competition is different. Each one has different athletes that come. Uh, yeah. Uh, there are different schools of recovery breaths and techniques. What is your opinion of them? Yes, I know that there are some that uh, preach fully exhaling and fully inhaling. Uh, my personal belief again, going off of what we just talked about with physiology, is that is more likely to uh, run the risk of blacking out. If you breathe out all the air in your lungs, <clears throat> you, again, upset that concentration gradient of oxygen, and you can pull the blood out of, or pull the oxygen out of your lungs. Um, how I teach is three recovery breaths where you exhale about 20% of the air, uh, through uh, your teeth, making a T sound, and then quickly inhale again, or letting a little bit of air out and then inhaling the word hope. And in doing that, either way, for me, the way I teach, uh, I would say letting 20% of the air out and back in again is the safe way to do it. Um, I know other agencies teach it different ways. Uh, I am a multi knowledge instructor and a pure apnea instructor, uh, and both of those teach the uh, little bit of air out and then back in again. And I've had great results with it, and I have seen not great results from other, uh, other options where you fully exhale. So that would be what I say about that. Yes, these are all good comments uh, answering uh, that question by uh, Mayo. Yeah, different conditions play a factor. Uh, if the, for example, if the pool is, has a dip in it, uh, as we saw in, in some other competitions in the past, uh, this pool is flat, so divers don't need to move up and down in the water column to stay close or far from the bottom. Uh, there are many, many, many different things that play a uh, play a part in what makes a dive good. And so boiling it down to the result is something that I generally try and avoid, because it's a, mostly about the experience, really. 
uh, at least in my mind and how I train and how I train other people. Yeah, Elena, you have lots of great people in the chat here. I mean, Evan Walter is the national record holder for most of the uh, pool disciplines for the U.S. Uh, Jordy is a uh, national record holder for Australia and has also done commentary for past events as well. Uh, let's see. I'm sure we have some enthusiasts in here uh, who are also very keen and interested. <laughs> Jordy, I agree with you. I am also a little surprised that there's no rest day uh, halfway through. I know it's in an effort to try and keep the competition short and sweet, uh, but man, there are plenty of divers who are doing all the disciplines. Uh, not even just one, like, not even just all the disciplines across all the days, but one discipline each day. That is a lot, especially considering that they are doing maximal attempts. The attempts are quite, quite long, uh, either with distance or with time, or quite fast if you're looking at the speed apnea disciplines. Uh, it is a little wild to me that we don't have a rest day, although we're all dealing with it, you know? Okay, I have some results from Heat 10. So, ooh, sorry. Uh, we have Mohammed Al Balawi of Saudi Arabia, 501 white card. Alejandro Al Perin, Argentina, 343 white card. Andre. Marazovic competing as a neutral athlete in the 50 plus division, four minutes and five seconds. Ahmed Azab of Egypt, 405, also white card. Arnaud Collard of uh, Belgium, excuse me, ooh, brain fart. 514, white card. Frederick Mayer, Australia, 55 plus, 503, white card. You love to see it. All right, coming up on Heat 12. In lane A, we have Abdullah Al-Mansuri of the United Arab Emirates. We have Abdullah Rahman Al-Balawi of Saudi Arabia, lane B. Lane C, we have David Tevanya. Last three minutes. Tevanyan of Armenia. Uh, lane D, we have Aris Ionides of Greece, competing 50 plus division. Lane E, we have Arno Manor of France, 50 plus division, and David Kustic of Croatia uh, in lane F. has a personal best of eight minutes. Let's see, who else do I have here more information on? Let's see, we have Aris, who has a, uh, holds the national record uh, for Greece at seven minutes and 20 seconds. We have a personal best from Menere at 6.07. I have no information on David, except that he's a very friendly and lovely person to hang out with. 
Also, yesterday did uh, 276 meters in dynamic bifins, which I believe put him in either third place or fourth place. Uh, Evan says, my understanding is that it takes at least 36 hours to completely recover from a max dive. Uh, yes, I believe that that does make a lot of sense. Partially what you're doing when you are diving is, if you're doing dynamic, you are, well, if you're doing any discipline, uh, in static, you are taxing the central nervous system really, really hectically. Uh, when you are doing dynamics, you are taxing not only the central nervous system, but also the uh, muscles as well and I mean you know don't even think about it if you're also doing the speed uh, events Twenty seconds. So doing some nice, Plus slow, seconds. big packs. And face down. Plus 20 seconds. Uh, yes, Jordy, that is correct. We do have athletes here who compete in everything. Uh, but then we also have athletes who are specialists. Uh, one of which that immediately comes to mind is Budimir Buda Surbat, who we'll be seeing later on. Uh, he's only here for static uh, and is an absolute legend. Also a super sweet guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him, one of the nicest people you will ever meet. Elena, I don't believe that that is a rule. Uh, if it is a rule, it's definitely not one that we have here at this comp. Again, Buddha is only doing static. We have quite a few other athletes who have only done one, one event during this competition. Yeah, Lena, each competition is a little bit different. Uh, some do have regulations. Um, at least for, for this competition, you can do one discipline if you like. See Abdullah there. 
looking pretty good. I don't, I'm looking at a screen very far away and I'm not seeing contractions, but that could just be because I'm very far away. If you look very closely, you will oftentimes see the ribs along the sides gently moving. And then towards the end, you will see much bigger bumps that sort of move the whole body. You can sort of see the head wiggle a little bit from time to time. Yes, that is correct, William. I believe, though, as this is the first uh, time Abdullah is competing in CMAS, uh, all the results are open. And this is this is first uh, uh, entry with a uh, athlete from the United Arab Emirates, and so all of the uh, discipline results are currently open. So as long as Abdullah gets a white card, that will be a new national record uh, for United Arab Emirates. For those that are curious, four minutes is, for most uh, organizations, what the uh, required static is to become an instructor. Just a fun little fact for you. Bronco has indeed entered. He will be competing later today. Ooh, Counter How asks, are you allowed to use a snorkel to do your breathe up in static? Seems like it would be better to start in the floating position you're in for the breath hold. Uh, yeah, that is fair. Uh, I've sort of ended up switching over to that myself, uh, where, yeah, keep my snorkel in my mouth, do my breathe up that way, uh, and then as soon as I'm ready, take the snorkel out. And yeah, I agree with you. It's it's good for keeping that position. And if you're using a nose clip rather than a mask, uh, it's also good because again, we have those receptors on our faces that let us know when our bodies are submerged in water. And that is partially what turns on the dive response. So ultimately, it does behoove us to have our face in the water if possible. Uh, it's just also a matter of how your relaxation is and what works best for you, how you like to take a full final breath, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, David is up. We also see Aris up. Being coached by Feyruz. Abdullah is still down. Experiencing some pretty big contractions there. Arnaud up. Whoop, keep breathing. Okay. Fully recovered there, looking good. White card for David. Abdullah coming up on 7.30, about. Again, the number on the screen is not the official time for each athlete, that is the time since start. Hey Bevan, good to see you. Another absolute legend joining the chat. Abdullah up around 7.40. Good clean dive. And a white card. <laughs> Maybe looking a little upset, hoping for a little bit longer of a breath hold, but uh, still, 7.40. 7.30, 7.40 is 
a very good breath hold. Really quickly, Bevan Reynolds is an up-and-coming star in South Africa. Uh, if I remember correctly, she currently holds two national records in pool. Uh, Evan, uh, Bevan works with Evan, uh, who also lives in South Africa, uh, along with me when I'm there and not traveling around. Yeah, Johan, uh, sometimes, even though it's a long breath hold, you know, this, this sort of goes back to that question again of what is a good time uh, for mere mortals. 7.30, 7.40 seems like an eternity. Uh, for others who are used to training to higher numbers, uh, that is disappointing. Coming down to the amount of training that you put in, uh, the effort getting to a competition, expecting to achieve a specific result, and then on the day, for whatever reason, mental, physical, relaxation, things didn't go well in the morning, things don't work out. And yeah, even though beautiful showing, athletes can still be disappointed. It's one of the drawbacks Jeez. of having one opportunity to do your max attempt in one discipline during the competition. But it's also a fact of these world championships. Just what happens, athletes come into it knowing that, and they do their best to try and mitigate those sort of factors that could impact them. But ultimately, ultimately you are at the, uh, at the mercy of what your mind and body and other stuff going on. You're at the, the mercy of life, you know? Okay, I'm quickly gonna read off the divers in the next heat. We have uh, in lane A, Amin Jadidi Figan, Jadidi Figan of Iran. In lane B, we have Mike Borner of Germany. Lane C, we have Noriki Yabe, who is the current Japanese record holder uh, with a record of 4 minutes and 33 seconds. Uh, we have Vahid Soravipur of Iran. We have in lane E, Osama Humaid of Palestine, seconds. and lane F, we have Fahad Al-Ghosabi Al of Saudi Arabia. 20 seconds. Uh, Ten seconds. And then from heat 11, the results are as follows. Hamad Ismail, Kuwait. Five, did not start. Four, Mark Verstappen of Belgium, 55 plus, 5 minutes and 4 seconds white card. Nida Muthran Bulut, Turkey, 444 white card in the junior Plus category. Seconds. Oleg Kachev, he is a neutral athlete, 432 white card. Youssef Almoyel, Kuwait, 555 white card. Boris Yust, Austria. Hopefully looking to see a new national record from Japan. Let's see if I have any other information on who the current record holders are for the other countries going at the moment. Uh, current record for Germany set at 710. And 
have no information on any of the others. Mike Borner holds the current German master record uh, at 6 minutes and 20 seconds. Noriyuki has a current uh, personal best in static of 641, which is a huge improvement over his last record uh, set a while ago. So it'll be exciting to see. Again, as we said before, coaches are allowed to touch the athletes. They're allowed to speak to the athletes only while their faces are in the water. As soon as the diver's airways come up over the water again, the coach cannot give any coaching at all. They cannot say anything. They cannot touch them. Doing so results in a red card. I invited a friend of mine to a competition at one point, and uh, they came in right as static was going on. And you have to imagine someone coming in who doesn't really know about free diving, doesn't really know what's going on, walking in, seeing everybody staring silently at someone in the water, face down, nobody moving, is quite shocking like why is that person okay but if you have the context you know we know we're all having a great time but I always like to think about that and think back to that uh, because it's kind of silly Used time is 5.54 and a white card for the men's 50 plus. The results from the last heat are in. Uh, heat 12, we have Abdullah Al Mansuri of United Arab Emirates, 7.26 white card. Abdulrahman Al-Balawi, uh, Saudi Arabia, 507, white card, David Tevanyan, Armenia, 607, white card, Aris Ayunaitis of Greece, 50 plus, 619, white card, Arnaud Manor of France, 50 plus, 627, white card, and David Kustic of Croatia, 630, white card. Heat is up. Noriyuki is also up around six minutes. Mike Borner, big smile on his face. 
something to note uh, uh, is that CO2 can get you quite high. Uh, if you hold CO2 in your body for a long period of time, uh, you will begin to feel lightheaded, you'll begin to feel spacey, you'll begin to feel very relaxed. Uh, and it's, if you can get past sort of the contractions and the urge to breathe, it's incredibly enjoyable and relaxing. Osama who made Palestine is up with a white card. Bahad also up around 7, 10. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Keep breathing. Okay. Okay. White card for Fahad as well. So that will be a new record for Japan. Uh, and as I don't have any information about Saudi Arabia, I don't know if that is a new match record for them as well. But let's hope so. Waving to the camera, smiles all around. Ah, we have a very slight break here. Uh, next official top will be in 12 minutes. I'm going to quickly take this moment to grab a water and run to the bathroom. Uh, you guys do the same, grab some snacks very quickly, and we'll be right back in five-ish minutes, seven-ish minutes.
Hello, I am back. Elena, you scared me. Yes, uh, they are showing repeats of uh, earlier dives uh, during little breaks that we're having. Okay, we are heading into the final two heats of our static competition this morning, after which we will have roughly a, let's see, hour and a half break. And then we will begin with the eight times 50 discipline, which will be, as we've seen so far, swimming 50 meters back and forth in the pool, coming up to recover in between, and trying to complete 400 meters in the fastest amount of time possible. Elena, no worries, it's all good. The first time I saw it too, I also had a little mini panic. Okay, we are getting ready for our next heat. Heat 15 starting in four minutes. Let me organize my notes here. Alright, so moving into heat 15 in lane A, we have Hassan Al Shahara. Al Shahara, excuse me, of Kuwait. Uh, lane B, Klaus Kasten of Germany. Lane C, Michal Bornczak of Poland. Lane D, Vladimir Pogrebenko, competing as a neutral athlete. 
Lane E, Boris Milosic. Milosic. Two minutes. Uh, of Croatia. Uh, and Lane F, Alan Pavlic of Slovenia. Hassan has a, uh, I believe, a record of 6.36 in static for Kuwait. Uh, Michal has a personal best of 7.08. Boris has a personal best of 8.24. Uh, and hopefully we can see some of those results improved upon here further. One minute. Heat 14, not Heat 15. So we have in lane A, uh, Slatni Ibrahim, uh, plus 10 seconds. Ibrahim Al Slatni, excuse me, of Oman. We have Bartosz Plonka of Poland, lane B. Fernando Iskar Rulen of Germany, lane C. Plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Uh, Retegoenia of Spain. Gregor Mucha of Poland competing in 55 plus and Hamad Alkalandi of Kuwait competing in lane F. Once again, if you guys do have any questions, please do feel free to post them in the chat. Happy to answer any and all. Yes, that was my mistake, Renee. We are on heat 14 at the moment. Yes, for previous results, let me see what I can grab for you guys. Uh, we're just getting the results from 20 minutes ago now. Uh, so actually, I do not have uh, Mike's results yet. No 
notice here. Little tiny contractions. Looking very gentle. Our coaches supporting our athletes. Uh, as I said earlier, coaches are allowed to touch the athletes. They're allowed to talk to the athletes. Uh, oftentimes, what a coach will do is touch somewhere on the athlete where they see that they're holding tension. Uh, oftentimes, in the shoulder or in the neck uh, or maybe the arms. <clears throat> You will also oftentimes see them checking in. There we see some big contractions from Bartos. You often see the coach checking in with an athlete, uh, getting OK signs from them. Oftentimes, those are predetermined between the athlete and the coach. Uh, there are plenty of athletes who do not like to know the time. And so in, that's a white card for, who is that? And he's gone. Um, a lot of athletes do not like to know what the time is, especially early, and until they get much further along. Uh, and so check-ins <coughs> are usually predetermined uh, between the coach and the uh, athlete. Ooh, we We are trying to avoid that mammalian dive response as much as we can here. I've never seen somebody swim while trying to also do a static before. Uh, that is definitely a new one for me. As I said before, as a static discipline, it's sort of in the name, it's, it's static. So we want to try and move as little as possible, although Getting to six minutes uh, while having quite large movements like that is fairly impressive. Bartosz is up and out. breathing, keep breathing. We're looking at Hamad right now. Okay, giving the okay sign, diver has 15 seconds after their airways come up to give the okay sign. That was pretty close. We'll have to see what exactly happens there. a white card for Hamad. And Ibrahim also out. Hopefully a white card there as well.
from Heat 13, we do have some results in. So we have we have Amin Jadidi Figan of Iran, 403 white card. Mike Horner of Germany, 545 white card. Noriyuki Yabe of Japan, 530 white card, a new national record. Uh, Vahid Shobra Bipur of Iran, 655 white card. Osama Huayd of Palestine, 5 minutes white card. And still waiting on Fahad of Saudi Arabia at the moment. Okay, Fahad Al Gosabai of Saudi Arabia, six minutes, and I believe a white card. Yes, white card. Okay, we have two heats left. This heat coming up now includes in lane A, Hassan al Shara of Kuwait. Lane B, Klaus Kasten of Germany. Lane C, Michal Bornczak of Poland. Lane D, Vladimir Pogrebenko, competing as a neutral athlete. Lane E, Boris Milosic of Croatia and Alan Pavlic of Slovenia. Canon camera. Again, you see one of our divers getting a gentle little toe into position. Still waiting on the results for Gotti, so I will let you know as soon as uh, they are ready. <clears throat>
Vladimir relaxing, doing his relaxation phase. Sun also getting ready. <clears throat> Thomas Way, the start list is on the CMAS Freediving face, uh, Instagram account and also the CMAS Facebook account. breath, got some packing going on. It's important to note that packing is an advanced technique that you should only attempt if you have had training in it. Uh, packing is used to add more air into the lungs beyond what it is capable of inhaling with muscles only. As a result, as a result, the thoracic cavity and lungs do expand beyond what they're normally used to holding, and you can sometimes cause uh, injuries to your lungs uh, with packing. Or alternatively, you can also have a blackout. Uh, what happens when you pack is you just add a bunch of air into your lungs. Uh, your lungs go from being little little flappy bags in your uh, chest into inflated full lungs. And if you continue to inflate, what can happen is because your heart and aorta, the, the tube that takes blood from your lungs to your brain, uh, that those both sit between your lungs. If you fully inhale and then pack on top of that, if you're not used to it, if you haven't stretched, uh, you can cause yourself to black out because the lungs push on the aorta and the heart and the heart isn't capable of pumping that much blood up to the head and therefore you have a blackout. So all that said, if you want to learn how to pack, go find a free diving instructor, go find a coach, and they will work with you. see Vlad somewhat floating away from the wall. Generally you would want to keep the athlete facing the wall so that uh, they know what their placement is. Uh, generally doing a static, especially for a long time, can become very disorienting at the end when you reach for the wall. Uh, if you have moved away from the wall if you're expecting the wall to be there and suddenly you reach out and it's not there, it can be a little jarring. Uh, so oftentimes we want to try and keep an athlete close to the wall, uh, right where they started so that they know that at any point they need to reach out, the wall is right there and they can use that to support themselves.
coming up on 3.30. Many competitive athletes begin to get contractions at around this time. Thomas, I'm trying to find a solution for you. Five minutes now. These athletes are looking really relaxed. Very, very tiny contractions. You even notice how relaxed the neck is. The arms just floating off at the sides. notice a lot of the athletes, their legs are just sticking straight up. Uh, that's partially because of the positive buoyancy from their wetsuits. Uh, for me personally, I find that if my legs are dangling, uh, I find that if my legs are dangling, when I take a full final breath or when I start the breath hold, my diaphragm and lungs feel a little bit constricted. Uh, whereas if my legs are floating up, I feel like I have more space to, uh, for the air to move around when I'm having contractions and that sort of stuff. Uh, so for me personally, when I do statics, I will wear five millimeter bottoms to keep my legs floaty, and then a three millimeter top to keep me warm. Okay, Hassan is up. White card. Just past eight minutes here. It's a white card, I believe, for whoop. it's 
Uh, that was a white card for Alan Pavlovich. Slovenia. We still have Vladimir down at 8.36 about. All divers are up at this point. Okay, white card. Moving on to the last of our heats for static today, heat 16. Elena, I do not believe we've had any blackouts so far. Uh, that may change in uh, this final heat. Uh, as I do believe there are a few who may be attempting to go for the world record. Uh, but we shall see. To our final heat, we have in lane A Alexander Maximov competing as a neutral athlete. Lane B, we have Maurizio Marini of Italy, uh, who has a personal uh, best of 8 minutes and 20 seconds. We have Branko Petrovic of Serbia, who is the current world record holder with a time of 10.45. We have Laurent de Ucaron of France, in lane D, lane E, Goran Kolac, uh, Trolak, excuse me, of Croatia, uh, who just set a new world record in dynamic by fins yesterday, now set at 290 meters. And then we just saw there Budimir Buda Sorvat of Croatia. These are all very heavy hitters in the static discipline, and it'll be very exciting to see what we are capable of achieving today.
Still waiting on results from Heat 14. As soon as I get them, I will let you guys know. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Plus 10 seconds. See Goran there not using a nose clip. Plus 20 seconds. Giving a little movement of his neck. Plus 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Relaxing the body. Divers are down. All divers are relaxed. All divers are floating. What do you guys think? Do you think we'll see a new world record here today? Let me know in the chat. <clears throat> we do see a lot of divers remove their hoods during this discipline. Uh, that is partially because when the peripheral vasoconstriction turns on and the blood moves from your extremities to your core, uh, all of that blood is hot. Uh, usually our blood circulates through the body and it also, that's how our body diffuses heat. Uh, and so when that blood is moved to our core, there's nowhere for that heat to go except for warming us up. And since we need the wetsuit on, since we need, we can't really do any moving, the best thing you can do is take off your hood. And uh, take off your hood and just, uh, sometimes you can have your coach pour cold water on your neck. You will sometimes see uh, athletes moving water across the wetsuit to try and uh, cool the athlete down a little bit. Alexander here.
feel free to spam your support in the chat. This is the final static heat now, uh, William. Uh, all the athletes get to go once, and then whatever they do, that is their placement within the overall standing. There is no uh, bracket type thing. Uh, Ahmed, it's possible that they might be. Uh, the water is cold when you just lay there not moving for a long time. Uh, I personally use a five millimeter wetsuit bottom and a three millimeter wetsuit top when I do static. Sylvia, good to see you. Evan is back. Uh, you can see a lot of the athletes are wearing gloves as well. Yeah, ultimately, laying face down in the water for 10 minutes gets cold. And in order to stay a little bit warm, uh, and again, not shiver, because shivering will use up oxygen unnecessarily uh, reducing our overall breath hold time. Uh, in order to avoid that, we wear thicker wetsuits. Coming up on five minutes and 30 seconds. Yes, cheer, cheer, cheer away, Tatiana. Wish you were here. Seeing Buddha have small contractions. You can also see Buddha using a pool noodle to hold his legs up. Again, as I was saying earlier, uh, you can sometimes feel a little bit constricted in the lungs and uh, ribs if your legs are, are sunk down to the bottom. Uh, if your legs are up, your body is able to stay perfectly straight. Uh, you can sometimes feel a bit more relaxed. Franco face down. Opting to wear a mask. <laughs> Sylvia, no worries. I have, I've already said a great many things <laughs> about static. Oh, we see some bubbles coming out for Goran. Looking relaxed and calm. Oh, I laid like that too, with my hands clasped together. Uh, either like that for me, or sometimes I will hold uh, my elbows, or, like lock my my arms together. Uh, yes, there are master's divisions every uh, 60 or every every five years. Uh, there's a new set of records. So starting, whoop, 
Seeing some pretty big contractions here from Goran. Not quite big. Blowing out. Okay sign. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Keep breathing. Very nice. Good recovery. So the rent is up around 8.45. Goran also up around 8.45. Alexander also up. No, that's not it sounds like Buddha is up. Shouting, I am okay. It's a white card for Buddha. Very nicely done. I believe Franco may still be down. Again, the current world record set by Branco, 10.45. Branco is up. I know if a coach touches an athlete, uh, that is a disqualification. Uh, again, all these results are pending review. So we will have to see uh, what exactly happens here. Uh, but if everything goes well, Branko will be taking first. And honestly, it is difficult to say what the remaining ones will be. I'm still waiting on results from Heat 14 for some reason. Okay, they're finally starting to come in now. Ow, ow. So from Heat 14, 30 minutes ago, we had Ibrahim al -Zlatni, Zlatani, excuse me, of Oman uh, uh, 7.03, Artos Plonka, Poland, 5.51, Fernando Iskar Ruland of Germany, 4.35, Gari of Spain, 7.59, white card. Gregor Mucha of Poland, 6.08, white card. Hamad Alkandari Alkand of Kuwait, 6.42, white card. Results come in, I will let you know.
Okay. We will have to see what the judges decide uh, on that touch. Yes, that is correct, Elena. Uh, the results are not final until later on this evening. The judges will now take some time to review all of the results. Uh, if there are any challenges, they will be done now. Uh, and then we will move on to the 8 times 50 discipline, where for a total of 400 meters, divers will be swimming 50 meter lengths on apnea and having a dang good time. As I know, no blackouts, just a lot of dancing around, which is what we like to see. I will be right back, you guys. I'm going to go try and get the results directly from the source rather than, uh, rather than waiting. Give me a minute and a half. Results are currently being worked on. Uh, for those that are curious about the results from this competition so far, you can find them on the main post on the Facebook and Instagram. Uh, additionally, there is a link posted there that will take you to the Google Drive where you can see our results as they become available. Yes, correct. We will we will have to see what the judges say. Ultimately, it's up to them to decide. Uh, we can speculate all we want. At the end of the day, we won't know until the judges give their decision. For now, 
I have a few results for Heat 15. Uh, we have Hassan al Shara of Kuwait, 637, white card. I have Vladimir Pogrebenko competing as a neutral athlete, 8 minutes 31 seconds. And then we have Boris Milosic. Milosic of Croatia, Still missing some results from Heat 15, but results for Heat 16 are coming in now. That last Heat that we just saw. I'll wait and see if I get some full results before I let you guys know. Back to interviews again. Got it. Let's see. So I do have the final unofficial results for Heat 16. Uh, lane A, we have Alexander Maximo. He is a neutral athlete, 8.56. Maurizio Marini of Italy, 8.43. Branko Petrovic. Serbia 10.02. The 
Laurent de Bucaron of France, 9.28. Goran Trolak of Croatia, 8.44. Budimir Sarbat of Croatia, 9.09. .09. All white cards. So if everything goes well, in first place we have Franco, followed by Laurent, followed by Budimir in third. Amazing. Ah, no it does not. <coughs> Okay, in that case, I'm going to go head off for lunch. We will be back in about an hour with dynamic, or sorry, excuse me, with the eight times 50 discipline. Uh, I will see you guys very, very soon. Thank you so much. I've been Brandon. Uh, see you in about an hour. Bye.